When you're collecting data from websites, it's extremely important that you download the actual image instead of just saving the source URL. And the reason is that if the website for any reason decides to change the URLs at which they store these images, and that's all that you've saved, well then all of your data is gonna be useless. So you need to download that file firstly and make sure you got that so you don't need to go and look it up in the format which they might change. So let's walk through doing that. I've got a suspicion that we can find these images if we added that path to the actual URL that we're checking. So I reckon this is just the file structure which they're storing all the data in on that website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out of there and assign it to a variable. So that down here, I can combine that page URL with the image source which I've got so far which looks like a relative file path to get the absolute URL, which I hope that image is stored at. So let's see if it's there. So I'm gonna try and get image source. I'm gonna try and overwrite what I've already got by taking the page URL and adding the image source. So let me just print that firstly. So now I've got this as a URL. That's not exactly what I wanted because this means the parent folder, and this is actually a file. So what I think is that I can find, for example, this image in pythonscroping.com slash pages slash image slash gifts slash image 2.jpg. So I wanted to kind of strip all of this stuff and that off actually, because this is a file and this dot dot means the parent folder. So what that means is from the image source, which has all of this in, I don't want these first two characters. So I'm just gonna get the third one and onwards. And I don't want this last section of that previous path. So what I'm gonna do here as a naive solution is just slice off that many characters. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I wanna go all the way back and I don't want to include the 11th character. So I think I'm gonna to need to do something like that. Let's just print it and see what happens. I've probably been pretty rough about that, but yeah, so I pretty sliced off one too many characters there because I don't have the slash. So now, no, I've done it wrong again. That's what I wanted, yeah. If I go to that URL, ah, damn it, that doesn't contain the image. All right, so I'm probably not going to be able to get the image from there. But maybe it's in the folder above. So what if I sliced off another one, two, three, four, five, six characters. And then I get this link. All right, what is this? Yes, there we go. So that's where the image is. So this web page here is actually just showing me the image file. And the browser, you know, all a browser is, is just something that knows how to show you the kind of file you're looking at in the right format that makes sense. So it shows JPEG files like this. It shows HTML files like this. So that is the source for that image. So what I want to do now is use that URL to download the image. So how would I go about that? Well, this could get a bit fiddly. Um, so let's take a look online. All right, Python save image from URL. I got a problem trying to save your image by URL. He's written this function, couldn't figure it out. Scroll right down to the first answer. Okay, this looks good. I'm just going to copy that whole thing. So what it does, just to make sure I understand it before I copy it, is requests. I'm going to make a get request to that image URL, get the content, and then I'm going to write that image data to a file. And that's file name I can specify, and then it's going to download it. Great. So I'm going to take that. And to start improving what is horrible code right now, I'm going to define this as a function, which is going to take in the image URL. And then I'm going to have all of this in there. So I'm gonna make a folder called images. And what I'm gonna do is pass in also the file name to save. So I'm gonna say FP for file path. Great, so now I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna try and download that image. And to start with, I'm just gonna save it with a dummy name image.jpg. I'm assuming that it's a JPG file. And I'm going to put that in my images folder. All right, so let's see if that function works. All right, something's happening. And 
I've got some image in there. There it is. I've done it. I've downloaded that image off of that URL and now it's on my machine. I've got the data. So there's a few things which we should improve here. One of them is obviously the image name. And the question is, what name do I want to give to this image? Well, let's think about some of the properties that I want this to have. I want to make it easy to link this image to the tabular data, which I'm collecting as well. And if there's multiple images, I'd like them to all be stored together so that if, I, if I'm curious, I can go and browse through the file structure and it makes sense intuitively. So one thing I'd probably want to do if I had a data set with multiple images is I want to create folders within this structure. I'm not going to do that now. I'll let you figure that out, but that's probably going to be the case. What I need to fix here is that they all have the same name right now. So I could get an index as I iterate through these and change this to image one, image two, image three, image four, but I'd rather actually just go with IDs because I know IDs are going to be unique. So I'm going to import UUID four and then down in my product, for each of these products, I'm going to create them an ID. And I'm going to turn that into a string. So this is going to be the product ID. So what I'm going to do firstly is in my tabular data, I'm going to put a product ID. And then instead of calling all these images image, I'll replace this with the product ID. Now, if I run this again, saving all those JPEG images as unique IDs. So in this case, it would actually be easy to link which images relate to which products because the product ID just needs a .jpg on the end, and then I can find the images which relate to that one. So I've pretty much done it now. I've collected the image data and I've collected the product data. All I'd need to do is add that in a list and turn that into some tabular data form like a CSV, save it with all of the different records in each row, and then make sure I've got all the images. The next thing I would change if I had more time would be that I'd create a folder with that ID as the name. And then within that folder, I'd come up with other random IDs to store images, which might be multiple images of the same product. And with that, I'd have a pretty good start at scraping all the data from this website. 